Okay, hi guys, welcome to Biology Online with Annie from Feeder. Okay, hi Year 12s, welcome back to another online lesson. Um, I hope you guys remember how to do this from all the previous experience that we've had in this, but um, I think we're going to be good. Alright, so today we actually have to talk about mutations, so let's jump back into it please. <coughs> Alrighty, so looking at our mutations, um, in this case you can see, oopsie, you can see that a mutation is always a change in the DNA of an of an organism. So the DNA is contained in the chromosome, as you know, and a change in that sequence is going to create a mutation. And whether it is silent or not can actually cause it to be a new allele. If it's not silent and it has a benefit then it will be selected for. If it doesn't have a benefit, you will still have a new allele, and it might be um, part of the phenotype, in other words, how they look, but it might also not. So, two types of mutations, those we can see, and then the silent ones. <coughs> now, you have harmful mutations, which obviously is not good for the organism's survival. Um, versus not. Okay, so some causes of mutations. The things that cause mutations, mutations can be actually happen spontaneously. Um, now, in our somatic cells, remember your soma, your somatic cells, that's your normal cells of the body, not your gametic cells. Because remember, the gametic cells are the ones that produce sperm and egg. Now, your somatic cells sometimes can undergo mutation, but this will actually not be passed on to our offspring. Um, spontaneous, just due to DNA replication, and it might be as simple as a mistake. But they can also be induced by envir environmental conditions like toxins and other things, and we call those mutagens. So spontaneous arise from errors in replication, and then the induced ones are because of mutagens. So things like radiation or um, <coughs> ionizing radiation. So it creates an ion of your DNA. So it hits some of the electrons off. Uh, viruses, microorganisms, environmental poisons and irritants, alcohol and diet. So here you can see that, for instance, UV light, which we need to know about in New Zealand specifically, has an effect on the thymine bases and can sometimes cause them to create this thymine dimer. You don't need to know any of this detail, but you just need to know that it can cause um, the UV light can cause a mutation to happen. Now, just again to show you, if, if we're looking at the South Pole and we look at all the yellow areas are the areas of high exposure and then in Antarctica itself, very high exposure. Um, and this is the hole in the ozone. This is 1995, but it moves and shapes and, and moves all the time. So you can see that as far as Africa, you can see there, it is not even in the green zone. And the green zone is this danger area here. So we are very close to the yellow zone, so is Tasmania and so forth. Um, but yes, yeah, so hence we really need to look after ourselves. Otherwise, we can create a mutation, and that mutation can sometimes turn into melanoma. And melanoma is um, a very dangerous form of skin cancer. Okay, viruses and microorganisms can also do this. We all know about um, uh, cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is caused by um, a virus called the human papilloma virus, or HPV, and they can implant themselves into our DNA. Now, people who are most at risk of this are intravenous drug users, um, people who practice unsafe intercourse, um, and many new partners, and also people at risk of HIV and AIDS, or who have that. Environmental poisons, we talked about mutagens, chemicals, tobacco smokers, coal and mining workers, and so forth. Okay, your alcohol and your diet. If you, you have a diet high in fat um, and very high in alcohol, then it can become a problem. When we talk about sexual reproduction, this obviously when we have the sperm and the egg merge. Now, if there's a mutation that happens during the production of the gamete, then that mutation can be passed on to the offspring. <coughs> but in this case, you can see 
it is just after the zygote was formed and now it's splitting for the first time into two. Now if something happens during this early, it can also have an effect. So if a if a um, mutation actually occurred this early, one half of this organism will be affected and the other half will not. Um, later on, obviously there's many more cells now, and as we go further and further, the effect of a mutation in the somatic cells will then be less and less. Um, here's some examples of some mutations, and these are obviously harmful mutations. But, as I said to you, the before fertilization sperm and egg, you can see the brown is the cells that are affected by the mutation. Okay, So consequently, in this case, the whole organism is affected by the mutation. Whereas if the mutation happened afterwards, after fertilization, after the zygote has um, divided a few times, it's only going to be displayed in certain areas of the organism. Okay, so gametic, gametic mutations are inherited. So in other words, the mutation happened in the mom um, during the production of the egg. Whereas somatic, it is in the soma or in the normal cells, and they are usually not inherited. Look at this apple, you can see that happened very early on after fertilization. That zygote must have been literally only two of them. The one side had a mutation for light, or the other side had a mutation for dark, but straight down the middle. Naval oranges, look, they have no seeds, so how do they propagate? This is, was a mutation of a little twin, and it's called a navel because of your belly button. Look, it looks like a belly button. But anyway, so that's a mutation that is obviously advantageous for us because we don't like the pips. Um, but because it doesn't contain any pips, we know that it's a somatic mutation in the navel oranges. When you think about it, there is no gamete here. Okay, there's no seed, there's no zygote, there's nothing to go forth and become a new organism. Okay, um, this cat, if you look at the face, yet again, early on during development, one half of it must have had an effect or must have had a mutation. Here are some harmful examples of harmful mutations in humans. Things like sickle cell disease, cystic fibrosis, thalassemia. Um, uh, other thing is in something like albinism and so forth. Okay, so it's all about the mutation that happens. But we also have neutral or silent mutations. So these two organisms might have the same or they might have mutations within them. Um, I know somebody who has only, naturally, only one kidney. Um, was born with only one kidney. My wife, for instance, has what's called a lobular kidney, which means that it is, it's kind of in lobes, and it's one third of the population has it, but it makes no difference. But it's simply interesting to know that we have different phenotypes in the shape of our kidneys. But a neutral mutation obviously has no effect, because there's no adaptation that gives it an advantage in its environment. Okay, so neutral mutation, frequently, remember we talked about the redundant nature of the DNA, of the genetic code. So if, for instance, we have this, where it was CTT up here, and a mutation occurred and the DNA now became CTG, your mRNA is going to be CTC instead of... Oh, sorry, G-A-G, um, because it is now C-T-C and not C-T-T anymore. But because it's C-T and the last one was a redundant, or um, if you look at the genetic code, both G-A-A -A and G-A-G -G codes for cursing or whatever G-L-U is. So consequently, this is a silent mutation. It has no effect whatsoever. Here's a beneficial example. Um, in a little town called Limone in Italy, um, they were isolated for years and years and years, um, and there was a mutation. And these guys are basically resistant or very tolerant to cholesterol. So um, high blood cholesterol, no problem for them. They are quite happy um, 
and it actually was just one amino acid that was changed. Um, some beneficial mutation for the mosquito. Um, so if we look at the Anopheles mosquito that spreads malaria, this mosquito became resistant to something called DDT. And DDT was a very, very bad pesticide that was used. Um, trying to eradicate the mosquitoes, but some of them became resistant to it, and that was due to a mutation. The same thing happens with um, um, an antibiotic resistance in organisms. So this is E. coli. And as you can see, around the antibiotic, there's a zone of inhibition, we call it. So it means that this guy is definitely, they are affected by the antibiotic. But look now carefully, we have two colonies growing right there, and these guys are more resistant to the ampicillin, to the antibiotic. And that is how we test it in the lab. It actually looks like this. When you take an agar plate and you inoculate it, now all the growth, that yellowish brown that you see there, are all the bacteria that's growing. And this antibiotic over there, that antibiotic over there, not going to do so much for the patient if this um, organism came into a patient. But if you look at the zone of inhibition, we call it, that's obviously this antibiotic would be better. And that is how we test for antibiotic resistance. Okay. Um, don't worry too much about that. So our different types of mutations, very, very important. Okay. So the first one is a point mutation, and it's a point substitution mutation. So you can see where it was, CTC, uh, CTT, in this. Always remember, we talk about triplets. So in this triplet of the DNA, the mutant DNA then would have been TTT instead of CTT. Okay, so a point substitution, a single nucleotide that was changed. You can also have <coughs> a piece of the chromosome that is actually removed. Now, think about it. This is package DNA. It's going to have a huge effect. Okay, So a whole lot of genes are going to be affected by this. We also, we talked about monosomy and trisomy and so forth. So if this is um, trisomy 21, instead of just having two 21 chromosomes, one from the mom, one from the dad, you actually received a third one. And that is an example of Down syndrome. Okay, or well then sometimes you can have monosomy, where you only have one, but not your homologous pair. So, point mutation, yet again. Um, and point mutations, with when they are substitution mutations, they can frequently be silent, usually when they're in this third position, over here in the triplet. But the degeneracy of the genetic code, not all... That actually helps to protect us against specifically those point mutations. So how does a point mutation actually affect the organism? Um, when you look at this, this can obviously have changed. And because we're reading in codons, it's going to create a different um, amino acid. So here's the unaltered code, so there's no mutation here. Um, you basically have... If you focus here, your original DNA, then it is transcribed into mRNA, and the mRNA is translated into the amino acid sequence. And as you can see, we have GLU, GLU over here. Now, in a, when there's a mutation, so you can see here the mutation substitutes a T instead of a C. So we have a piece of mutant DNA. Now, there's a T in there, and because we have a T, now mRNA is now going to code for a for an A and not for a G as it was supposed to in the original. Okay, so the substitution happened, the T came in, and now instead of having GLU, GLU, we now have lysine and then GLU. So you can see how this is going to affect the DNA. Well, not the DNA, but the polypeptide chain. Okay, so... <coughs> Over here we have a case of the original gen DNA, it was a CTT, and then it became a ATT. But the nice thing is, with ATT now becomes, um, 
the mutated DNA stop codon. It creates a stop codon. Okay, so UAA is actually a stop codon, which prematurely ends the synthesis of the polypeptide chain. So <coughs> this is just going to create a protein that doesn't actually continue on like this one did, but it actually creates a, st a stop codon and immediately it's prematurely stopped. So you only have these two amino acids and that makes no sense. Okay, so non-sense substitution. Now really important is reading frame shift. This is very, very important. Okay, so if you look at the mutation inserts a C next to this cytosine. Okay, and because we're reading in threes, if I plug another C in there, what's going to happen to my reading frame? Let me get a pen first. Okay, so coming back here, you can see that it has to move down. Now look at our reading frame. So this was our first reading frame. What color is my pen here? Then this is my second reading frame. And now suddenly, previously my reading frame was CTT after the ATG. But now it becomes CCT. And the next one was supposed to be CTC. However, in the one where it moved down, now we have TCT, CCA, AGA instead of CAA and GAT. So can you see that everything downstream of the of the insertion mutation, everything downstream is affected. Okay, just look at that again. It inserts and everything moves down one. Consequently, your reading frame moves. And because your reading frame is no longer reading the original triplets, everything after the insertion um, mutation changes. Just to then summarize, when you look at the different type of point mutations, okay, we can have a substitution mutation. So where this was the original, and you can see the C there was changed for a T, and then on your mRNA, instead of having a CG, you now have a TA. And because of that, the amino acid GLU is now being replaced by the amino acid LIS. All right, but when you have an insertion mutation, everything has to move down. And because they're moving down, everything after that insertion mutation is now read wrong by your um, frame shift. Okay, so an insertion, the insertion of this extra C, we now have two Cs, where if you look at the original, it was only one. So now the reading frame shifts from triple A there, then an ATG, and then a CCT. Whereas originally it was CTT and not CCT. Okay, so everything after my insertion changes. The same exact thing happens with a deletion mutation. If you remove one, the whole side of this will move up and close that gap. And because it's closing the gap and you've just removed one, we have a reading frame shift. So yet again, if you read in threes, triple A and then ATG, and then it was supposed to be CTT and then CTC. Whereas now we have deleted a, a cytosine and now it's TTC, TCC instead of what it was originally. So everything after your deletion mutation is affected. So if you want to read more, there's a lot of them that you can look at. And um, I'm not going to go into all the various different syndromes and so forth, but just know they are there for your interest sake. Okay, thank you everybody. Have a great day. Speak to you later. Bye.